Got it. I got it. Look at so that. we are back. Look at how perfect that is. Yeah. So are you in the office right now? Yeah. Currently I am in the office. And it's like the wee hours, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is it almost it's bedtime morning. for you or, or is it kind of like still the, the shank of the evening for you? So basically, uh, as you know, we are entrepreneurs and we have this night owl all a thingy. So uh, this is basically a time where we just pack up the stuff and sometimes it also increase till 2 a.m. or till 3 a.m. in the morning. So oh, wow. it's like we enjoy what we do, like whatever yeah. we are doing here, we are building something for people, solving real problems for the people. So when your passion comes with the work, you don't see the time. Right, it's right, right. Because you're a lot of your clients are people like me who are a million miles away, right? Uh, so, so let me ask you the question, what you had today? Oh, oh you're going you're gonna to slip that in before I have a chance to ask you. So mm -hmm. uh, scrambled eggs and avocado and way too much coffee. So that's, that's been my day so far because it's early in the day here now. Since you asked me that question, I have to return the favor and ask you, <laughs> what have you eaten today? So I just finished my dinner and I had biryani. Uh, have you heard about biryani? Yes, that but uh, maybe some people haven't. So do tell exactly what that is. Sure. So basically, biryani is an Indian cuisine with that is made up of rice and some aromatic uh, spices like cardamoms, cloves, and this. A full mouthful flavors of different spices and the taste of a soft biryani. It's quite obvious to me, Ayushi, that you are a listener of, of my show because you know it's like very food forward. We talk about that all the time. And so you like beat me to the punch with the question, but I want to introduce you to my audience. Ayushi Singh is a guest who truly embodies the art of living a multifaceted life. Ayushi, you're an entrepreneur and everyone's going to find out about that. You're driven by innovation. You're a skilled writer, which I want to talk about because, you know, us writers have to stick together. And you kind of weave captivating narratives, a, a, a graceful classical dancer, from what I understand in your bio. We're going to talk about that as well. And of yeah. course, you're an avid food connoisseur. I think everybody from India really knows their foods. This is something we're going to delve into pretty deeply. And of course, you're one of the masterminds behind magicroll.ai. And that's a platform that empowers content creators like me, a little baby content creator, to reach new heights. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm relying on you for, it is to help me do that. But that's not all. I understand that when you're not revolutionizing the tech world, you're also indulging your palate in the delightful exploration of culinary arts. So you're quite the well-rounded person. And I, I really want to dig into that, if that's okay with you today. Thank you, Matthew, for having me on the show. I guess this intro is the best intro that I have since, like, right? Now. It's like it covers my uh, what I am good at in my passion, what I am passionate about professionally or personally. So thank you so much for having me here. And let's begin the journey of food, dance, work, technology, everything. Tell everybody where you're located, what part of India you are, and where that is. Sure. So basically, I am born and brought up in Bihar, which is one of the state of India. And I did my college from Bangalore, which is in South. So basically, I was born in North, and I did my college in South. So coming up with from both the places, I have 
taste the North Indian cuisine also, know that people very well, as well as the South Indians, who are also one of the warmest people that you have ever seen. The taste, have you heard, heard about the dishes like rava idli, dosa? These are the best dishes from there. And the mouth-watering flavors that they have. And then currently I am in Delhi, which is the core heart of India. And here I am building my product that you mentioned, magicroll.ai. And uh, currently, yeah, I am in my office and connecting with you and talking about all this stuff. Is Delhi in the center of India? Yeah. So Delhi is basically in the north of India. Oh, and it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are a lot of countries in that region, right? There's like uh, Bhutan and uh, Bangladesh and Nepal. And there are a lot of countries very close to yeah. the north of India. Those that are the neighboring, yeah, those are the neighboring countries of India. Is India on friendly terms with their neighboring countries? So typically, yes. Uh, due to the coming of the new government of Narendra Modi, he is trying to show friendly relations and patching up with different country because at the end, the unity is something that we all want. And this also makes us rise in different innovation, different technology, coming up of different people from different part of countries, whether it's India, whether it's Bhutan. So for now, we are also coming up with good relationship with these neighboring countries. Not the, that much good with Pakistan, but yeah. Okay, still. right. There's been a long-standing feud between India and Pakistan. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. What is is that? Was that over a land grab or something that happened in the past? Yes. Yeah, so basically, India got independence in 1947, and that time India was uh, Pakistan was not created. After the partition, like after getting independence, India was divided into two parts: India and Pakistan. Pakistan was a mus Muslim majority state. So right now, also it's a Muslim majority state. So from there only the political, like because all the political leaders at that time belong to the same country, they know each other, but due to some different mindset and different social and econ economic belief, they did this partition. And uh, then from there only there are some mutual rights and some conflict between each other. But still we are trying to make it in a peace peaceful way, trying to just not always raise a war against each other, which most of the pa time Pakistan has done, but we had always given an answer in a very peaceful way. The uh, part of India that's like another, what we would call Silicon Valley, is that Bangalore? Bang so initially it was Bangalore and then it converted into Bengaluru. So that is known as the Silicon Valley of India. And there is the startup culture. Like when you go there, you will meet with wonderful people with like minds and with people who are living in one BHK flat and running a startup with uh, millions of valuation and uh, the energy there the food there it's like something which make you get up in the morning and do something great mm -hmm. and from there only the passion for me of starting this building this product or starting something my own has begun you know since we've talked a little bit just mentioned magicroll.ai could you tell everybody a little bit about what it's designed to do and help them with yeah so Magic Roll AI is basically an AI editing platform which convert your raw video into an aging and viral video in just minute and single click. Just like Matthew need some special spices as well as right tool to make a great and tasteful dish same, same, a content creator need a very perfect editing tool to give the vision of his storytelling in reality. That's what we do. We provide a best AI editing tool so that creator 
can bring their vision or the creativity in reality. You know, that totally makes sense. For, for those of you who are watching Ayushi and myself right now, um, mm -hmm. this is the fun part, doing the conversation and being able to look into your eyes and speak about all of these various wonderful, colorful subjects. But the hard part of creating content is all the things that take place after this, and that is the editing and the sound and all of that. So what you're doing, Ayushi, is helping content creators like myself make a more cohesive product without spending so much time. So I believe, Matthew, right now, whether it's a teacher, a student, or a chef, everyone is into making content. And uh, those kind of creators don't have a particular technical expertise in editing tools, or they don't know how to start their content creation journey when they actually have a very great idea for it. So there we come, we're like, let's do whatever you want to do. If you want to create your content, start making it. If you want the virality, if you want the engage, engagement on your video, we are there for you. We will make your video hooked by your audience. That's fantastic. Well, your background is pretty much in computer science. So uh, that's a roller coaster ride for me. I uh, graduated with a mechanical engineering degree, oh, wow. which is totally uh, apart from what I am doing right now. It's it's a family tradition, actually, in my family. Uh, we all have grown up with the people, with the siblings who have taken mechanical engineering. And I was also the part of that family. So being able to get computer science still, I choose mechanical engineering because that's what I wanted to pursue and which I am, which I loved, uh, like going through the engines and different things. But somehow I uh, just joined the innovation cell of my college and there this technology and this techie part, basically the product formation, how the product is made from zero to one. And that hooked me up. And from there, the journey in product part, in the innovation of building a product from scratch, which is actually used by the people and solve the real problem. And meanwhile, Pallery, pursuing my degree in mechanic, took interest and did some several, several real uh, problem on solving the product innovation part. And till then, it's going great. Everybody has heard of the term mechanical engineering. What does a mechanical engineer actually do? So I believe that's the root of any technology. You need to know what physics is about, whether it's Newton first law or whether it's how to create a car or how to know the basic parts of the car. You should have that much knowledge that what's the engine or let's say how you can play or do some electricity or something like changing the device motors. So that was something you have to learn through different devices, do some, you can say machines and try to make some different parts. Let's say when you are uh, in a car manufacturing setup. So there we go, their mechanical engineers comes, they know how to build a car and that also build it in a way that is safe and that prevents a person who is driving a car in a good way. So that's the main role of mechanical engineers. Oh, okay, so so basically, in a, in a sense, a mechanical engineer understands how things work, how things can be built, and then add to that the technical expertise, and it can kind of make you more proficient in technology? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of people in your family are trained in mechanical engineering. How big is your family? How many siblings do you have? How many people are in your family? So I have one sibling. He is also a mechanical engineer, 
but currently he has pursued uh, he is pursuing uh, mba uh, and from a top institute of india that is exelerite college uh, and for that college there is an entrance exam to qualify to get into that college and he got air that is all india rank 2 uh, which is a great like lack of uh, students uh, give that exam and he qualified and get an rank of 2 in all over the country so uh, we we are very proud of him and currently he is pursuing the mba this is his last year and i am planning to uh, make him come in my company and do something good <laughs> at least oh, that would be great that would be really yeah. good are you talking about it with magic roll yeah Oh that's great. How many people are in the company now at this point? I don't know you guys are trying to generate funds and angel investing and things like that. So how many people yes. are involved in Magic Roll? So currently we have around a team of 5 people and uh, they are the best team like we are the best team that we dream of. like it's like we have uh, vivek pavan these people are the you can say pillars of the magic role one of the pillars of the magic role and there are another people like dhawan suman kanhaiya and they are just doing the coding stuff and the best person who you can connect with when you have any technical issue and yeah so right now these uh, set of people are the back end you can say of our organization we are growing and uh, currently we are fundraising so uh, let's hope for the best and see how it goes i want to talk a little bit more about the food because you actually brought it up before i did which is highly unusual so tell us once again a little bit about what a daily menu would be and explain to our audience what those foods are what they contain and how you prepare them perfect so i like cooking but due to what i do or what i am building there is a little bit time constant so i try to mostly make sure to have my breakfast that is made by me so uh mostly in the morning i try to have bread with scrambled eggs or omelet that's the my go to breakfast for most of the day with some banana shake or any uh, apple juice or something like that and uh, mostly in the afternoon we have a indian meal that is rice dal dal is something that is made of pulses you can say and chapati chapati is uh, you can say a bread with uh, that is made of wheat and some veggies it's like a whole course meal having different proteins and everything and same we go with the dinner as well but as i am in delhi uh, most of the time i used to eat in a canteen or get deliv- delivered by the uh, by uh, by outside but when i am at home that's the best part like my mother is there she is the best cook she knows all like she knows my favorites as well as if you tell her to cook dish uh, this particular dish she will make it in a best way and whatever it's a simple dish or something like that taste very good and it's a like you can have it every day homemade food is something that i can have every day any time and uh, with extra ghee ghee is something that is emulsified butter you can say and uh, that is something i really re- like with my breads and uh, yeah and pulses is in my understanding are things like lentils and other kinds of beans and things along those lines is that correct correct, correct. one of the things i want to talk about is the the religious nature of food choices that are necessary in various different parts of india but let's let's start out with the first part of the foods that you're eating it sounds like you're staying rather native in your choices more so than pulling from other cuisines other countries foods so i'm uh, the country in which i'm living is so diversified when you travel from one part to another 
you will get to taste different kind of food it's like this country is mix uh, is mixed with flavors like in north you have different kind of cuisine in south you have different kind and the varieties are so much that you don't have let's say if you are tasting each variety you don't have get a chance to taste something which is outside the country so when it comes to indian tastes it's like something which is diversified the taste birds are the extremes here it's like when when you're talking about sweet there are different kind of sweets gulab jamun kheer and rasmalai and uh, jalebis these are something which uh, which uh, anyone can love it like nobody ta- can say no for it indian yeah. sweets are are some of my favorite son papdi and gulab jamun are things that i go crazy over <laughs> yeah and when it comes to the protein intake or say a particular diet the food is rich in fibers and different required vitamins or let's say proteins that are needed by our body and uh, we every day we have this uh, particular thing of right now in india most of the people they are having the homemade food that are prepared in the kitchen by their mother following the same old tradition mixing the spices in the right amount whether it's a turmeric and cardamom so that spices that add up to in a diet which makes the whole diet of a particular human in a best way some of those spices are extremely healthy you know things like like turmeric have a lot of wonderful compounds in them and the other spices i think that when you buy them whole you'll want to roast them and then grind them and then add them in specific proportions is that correct correct and we don't buy packed spices we buy the raw ones make it homemade as you mentioned to get the best taste out of it the last time you and i spoke you were talking about pani puri and i i was drooling so could you please explain what that is to our, to our audience Matthew it's one name here and uh, you are just uh, telling about pani puri i can't get it now it's you <laughs> just started some topic because that's one of the food which anyone can have it any time right now when you talk about it i just feel like i need to have this pani puri and uh, it's something the water the filling inside it it's like a puri with crunchy puri filled with uh, potato and some uh, spices in it and then mint or let's say tamarind water it's it's like khatta mitha you can say in uh, in hindi so khatta mitha means spicy sweet and so all taste all mouth watering taste at once when you have that one pa- pani puri and that refreshes your mind and it's that much tasty that you want to have it again but it's like you have to wait for a few a uh, few seconds to get the real taste of it i want to explain to our audience in case you're not quite certain from the description of pani puri it is sort of like a round crisp a light kind of wafer or chip kind of texture that's filled with a little bit of uh potato like ayushi said and maybe some cilantro and then a flavored water which might have tamarind flavor so it's crunchy on the outside and then gets filled with the filling and then you pop it in your mouth right it's very small like maybe the size of a golf ball or something yeah Yeah. So I request all the audience by any chance if you are visiting India that's one of the first go to dish you have to have in India. And it is a street food for the most part. It's yeah. not something you would sit down at a restaurant and have you would be standing on your feet walking around the streets and getting it from like we call them food trucks here but you guys have <laughs> food stalls and stands, right? Yeah. So can you just order the 
part of the dish that is just the, the, the cracker portion and then get the filling portion on the side so you could make them yourself? Is that how it works or is it always yes. pre-done for you? Yes, it, uh, it works like that. We got all the separate, let's say it's a mixer and the wafer and the water. We get it in a separate container and then you can make it according to how you wish for it. So that's another way of eating. But the uh, you can say the excitement or the best part of eating Pani Puri is on the street when the person is serving you and you are eating in a very fast way so that the next come on your plate. So before that, you have to have it and then waiting for the another, uh, another piece of it because that is something you can't resist. Right, right. How much do these things cost? Because Americans probably, their minds will be blown when you tell us the cost mm -hmm. of the foods there. So uh, right now, when you visit the streets of Delhi, it will cost you 30 rupees for six pani, six pieces of pani puri. So 30 rupees in INR. And let's say the dollar worth right now is 82. Uh, One dollar is 82 rupees. Mm -hmm. So right now, you can have a, around... So you can say when you go with the mats, 18 to 20 pani puris in one dollar. Nice. I could probably polish those off in like one minute. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So what are some other really popular dishes? The more north you go, the spice level increases. But when you go down south, the sweetness, the creaminess, they use more coconut, coconut oil, coconut creams that increases in the south so that is something you can see in india also okay so it, it's flip-flop from the way it is in, in our part of the world that's very interesting some people associate indian food with being way too hot for their mouth but it's really not the case is it it's very flavorful it's not necessarily always spicy hot yeah, and that's the case with Pani Puri also. When a person who is eating it for a first time have it, they will feel it's very spicy, but give it a time, give two to three seconds, and then you will see the feel or the real taste of uh, Pani Puri. So that's how you have to give time and taste it, and then you can't resist to have the second one. <laughs> the uh, American palate is very, very subtle comparatively to India. India definitely is one of my very favorite cuisines in the world. So my question is, when you taste American food, does it do anything for you or is it just like total bland and boring? So we have to add extra spice to it to make it much more. Like you can say, when we are having something like that, we go with extra spice or extra sauce and you can say chaat masala. Chaat masala is something which is mix of different spices. It's a powder which add more spice, more flavor to any particular eatables. So whether we are having a salad, whether we are having a uh, scramble egg, we add that chaat masala to make it more flavorful food. So that you can find in any Indian restaurant or any American restaurant that is in India. And you can ask for it. And that's how we eat American food in India. <laughs> right. You can handle it that way. So chopped masala then would be a spice blend, but something that has chilies and a little bit of salt and some aromatics inside of it. Yeah. We ca cannot leave without spice, whether it's in a life or whether it's in a food. <laughs> right. So when you go and travel to, let's say, countries like America, do you have to bring along your heat and your spice and your flavor? We need to. Uh, so uh, till now, I didn't got a chance to travel outside India. But if I will, I need to travel these uh, things in my backpack so that I can have the taste of India outside the country also. Right, right. So you haven't yet started doing any travel, but do you think that that would be in the near future, considering that you're getting involved with you know, content creators and tech people and a lot of your clients are here in the United States? Yes. So 
traveling is something that i really want to do and uh, as soon as i get a chance to travel to different part of country i will not miss that chance and uh, that is something you explore different community meet different kind of people get to know about different culture and which somehow brings some good change in you also you just get to know about the surroundings new surroundings and that help us personally to grow more the times that you're traveling when you get to break bread with another person sitting across the table from them and doing this there's nothing better in the world to be able to learn someone's culture and history than when you sit down and eat with them oh i think you froze are we frozen she there seems to be a direct correlation with the more high tech person that i speak with on this show the more technical issues and problems we have and i think that that is just an interesting conundrum is there anything that you can say about about that situation and why that seems to happen with increasing frequency with the, the people who are more engaged in technology than others so initially i was feeling little upset about this that this technical issue happened but after you are telling this particular coincidence that happening in every episode when you are connecting with technical person then now i am having some relief that okay this is a particular you can say fortunate thing that happens in the show and it's a tradition here so let's follow that tradition <laughs> it's it is a tradition it's so funny too because i was having some major issues technically um prior to having this man who's my friend his name is Scott Merrill he does a show on youtube called ask your computer guy and he was just about ready to celebrate his 100,000th subscriber for his channel and i was having a particular issue and he was going to talk me through it and give me all the ins and outs and the, the technical expertise and the genius stuff but when we connected here on zoom he couldn't even get his sound going so it was it was hilarious and this seems to happen all the time so uh, it's something that i half expect now yeah so as i mentioned before you have to have a little bit spice in your life so this is one of a particular moment where it's it's something like you don't have everything planned anything will happen in a mid and at that time you will be stuck but you have to be patient and just wait to get the power come and get your wifi on <laughs> There you go. You know, you're very zen about this whole thing because I would be shit shit shit. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> But you seem to have found a little bit of peace. <laughs> yeah. So, you can't have control to everything. So, just go with what you're best at and rest. Everything will uh, fall at the right time and at the right place. So, just be confident about yourself. and do the best you can. Oh, that's great advice for everything and everyone. Before we got cut off by technology and the gods that take care of all that stuff, we were talking about travel and I was yeah. saying how wonderful it is when you meet new people in another country or another city and you get to sit down and eat with them and learn about them and their culture and their architecture and their history. There's nothing better than rolling up your sleeves and digging into food together with someone else. Yes, and uh, knowing uh, different people with different backgrounds, learning about their culture and then having the best food that they had since like forever. So that actually uh, give a bandwidth to your thinking, to your taste buds. and to different networking like here you are networking also and just you can say uh, refreshing your mind with good memories absolutely you know i just can't wait to visit you guys there and to be able to go on a a spree and a tour of the foods and the flavors and the people because you know just about every single person i've met over the years from india has been friendly and intelligent and and fascinating so i'm really looking forward to my visit 
yes and we will be very like happy to host you here matthew and when you are telling about indians being friendly i guess that's what we were taught taught by our parents and they were taught by their parents that atithi deva bhava atithi deva bhava, bhava means that guests are your god so make them feel like home respect them and uh, just don't upset them so that's what we follow here any foreigners who comes to our country we just make them feel like home here no, like don't be like okay this is person someone from outside nothing like that you are at in your home and we will give you the best guide and the best taste of food that you have never seen or experienced in your life i totally believe you so i i need to ask you about the sheer amounts of population in india when someone like me comes there and there's just a huge concentration on on people if everyone is walking this way on the street and i come out the door i have to walk that way too right i can't go that way um right. so how do people deal with that people from other countries who come and visit and that there's just the throngs of people um do you find that a lot of foreigners like me would have a panic attack or have a difficult time with the crowds so uh matthew i i feel when you are visiting a new country or let's say when you're doing experience something that is new to you that you haven't you ex experienced before you will be a little bit hesitate or little bit scared about what ha will happen there same happens with the foreigners too but the warm welcome the you can say the homely feeling that our people give to you is something that negotiate everything so that huge crowd that the warm welcome that you get from huge crowd that is something that make you comfortable here we are the best guide here he knows each corner of each country let's say you are visiting delhi you have me Mm -hmm. i know different places and different food you can just visit different corners and taste the best food here but i've been so strict for a while I, when i come to india i'll have to like all bets are off i'm going to get everything and try everything i'm looking at the artwork over your right shoulder on the wall there and it looks very westernized can you tell me a little bit about the choices that you've made for the artwork because it doesn't fit my mind's eye with what you might have so I'm just <laughs> wondering why that was chosen so basically uh, we just wanted our workspace to be something that has much more of color and with much more exciting quotes like uh, there is one quote go with the flow so we have a particular portrait star uh, attached there that dead fish go with the flow you are not a dead you can make your own path and then go on that particular path don't go with the flow so we have a different view of seeing these particular thing here it's written do not comp compromise so get the best like if you want to travel travel if you want to taste the best cuisine in india or taste different variety of food taste if you want to solve real people problem solve it build a product and give it to people so that's if you want to contribute to different society uh, different people in the society for a good do it it's like the right time is now so we are focusing on that mindset and yeah I think that's really good. I want to ask you a question or two because I'm unfamiliar about um the I guess the social classes that take place in India which appear to be more pronounced than they are in the US even though we've got plenty of our own of those kinds of things but could you tell people who are watching us right now a little bit about how the that system works in your country? so we have the caste system here and on that the reservation are also made so let's say we are giving any government exam 
so different caste just like general which is the top category these are the category general obc so and then there is scheduled caste so the reservation are mainly made for the lower class people that are scheduled class so those people have the largest percentage of qualifying the exams the government exams so it's, uh like that the general class people general class people they have the lowest reservation category in this competition exam and uh, in india there is still this belief that we have to prioritize the upper class people people still have that the uh, no touch thing for the lower caste just the you can say achhut achhut in english means untouchables so still in some primitive areas in villages of the country people still follow these myth which day by day it's improving or it's developing the mindset is still in that part like still people are people my own you can say grandmother she have this particular thinking but my mother she had developed it in some way and even i i had also developed in in some way so it's like in the mindset is developing but still when you go in the primitive areas of india this particular tradition of uh, not eating even with the lower caste is not even uh, like people don't eat with uh, lower caste people or don't sit with lower caste people let's say you are sitting on the chair the lower caste people have to sit on the ground they can't just be equal to the high class people so that is you're saying it still exists but it's changing and especially for younger generations like yourself that's something that you would like to do away with yeah so for me and let's say most of the people of our generation we believe the backwardness is in the thinking not mm -hmm. in a like if you think good or if you think in a positive way then you are not a lower caste or a backward class people but when it's come about your thinking in that particular way like uh, not you are taking women as equal as men then you are a backward class people because mm. your thinking is like that is the caste system something that you are born into or is something that is more about the way that the government creates separation so the caste system is something that we are born into but when uh, we got independence our constitution is framed like that so that the lower caste people will not be discriminated by their privileges so the constitution is drafted in such a way that they get the opportunity in different let's say getting a job in government uh, office office or being an officer but now the things has been changed people of general category are not as good as compared to the independent area like right now maybe general class people are more poorer than those lower backward class people and they are the high officials now because they are getting the reservation category but still we have this particular thing i guess uh, in every country there is some situation you have some pros and cons of your constitution and we can't change it we have to just adore it and just get a, a, adopt to it and see how uh, we can do to the society instead of just always blaming the constitution or the government right what about social programs for those who are in need is that something that the government is likely to help people with and do they do that yeah uh, there are many social programs that has been uh, done by the go government whether it's about job like employment or whether it's about providing the food or electricity electricity to the primitive areas or in india so mm -hmm. right now uh, you can say the government is totally focusing on the betterment of the people like they want skilled uh, citizens they can stand on their feet and go and get the things done and maintain their livelihood in the best way 
Is education provided to anyone and everyone who wants it? Uh, or is it something like it is in America that if you want a particularly good education, you're going to be spending a particularly high amount of money for? So this is changing in India. The government school and colleges, they are getting better day by day. The teachers there are very uh, well uh, very well uh, learned and they provide the best education to the students. My mother, she is a government teacher. And uh, when I'm seeing like she is a government teacher from last 10 years. And when I go 10 years back, the school, the facility that they had, the teachers or whether it's a student, they had that was totally different from now. They are getting nothing as less as any private school where students where parents have to pay a hell lot of money as compared tuition fee okay, when you term it to a tuition fee as compared to the government the government is providing the quality education at as minimal price as possible okay. so that's something changing the narrative of india do women enjoy equal rights in india across the board in all classes so when you say India is a developing country, this is also something which is changing. Right now, when I'm getting that freedom to grow, to educate myself and then building something, that's I am a proof that India is changing. I'm building something with two other person. And being a woman, we are getting a lot of privilege here, as well as equal support from the government. And government is working on that also to give women a chance to grow. When it's come to India right now, when you go same, when when it, it comes to education, same, it comes for the women equality. equality. People are working on it and it's developing, but yeah. The improvement is cool. Uh, I was going to ask you about your last name, Singh, S-I-N-G-H. Is that one of the more common names throughout the country? Our names, our surnames are decided on our castes or on our religion. So I'm a Hindu and my caste is Rajput. Rajput is basically the, uh, you can say, the son or daughters of kings. And kings here are termed as the lions and in lion lion is an you can know the animal and in hindi lion is known as singh share or singh so singh is something that are lion and that is our surname so that is something which is much more even punjabi they also put singh as their surnames okay okay so that's very interesting so that would be considered like an upper class or a stronger surname or something along those lines? Yes. So the upper caste are the Brahmins. Brahmins are the priest. And then it comes Rajput. And then it goes to Bhumiyas and then some lower caste. So we are the top, uh, you can say the top caste, uh, which, which is not a privilege. But when you are asking about it, I can say, yeah. This is how the naming goes here in India. At the top of the show, I mentioned uh, about your love of classical dance. Can you explain uh, a little bit about what that is and then maybe step back a couple of feet from your microphone and do whatever it is you do <laughs> so we can see that? Sure, sure. would love to. So basically, uh, I'm a classical Kathak dancer. Kathak is one of the Indian traditional dance form. And I have a five-year experience of uh, in it. And uh, in this, uh, basically every year, just like you give your exam in school, here also you have to give every year exam to qualify to the next level. And for five years, this particular whole courses, I started this in like, in when I was in seventh standard, I was a small kid and used to go and you have to wear a very, you can say, one to two kg of ghungroos. Have you heard about this term, ghungroos? I have not. What is that? So that is basically you tie it in your leg. And in that small, small rings are there, bells type, which uh, you can say, which rings and give sound when you dance. So in both the legs, you have to tie it. 
and then you have to dance on the rhythm of harmonium which is also an in indian instrument and tabla again an indian instrument so on the music you have to dance and play with different steps and uh yeah that's what uh, Th kathak is all about there are different classical dance forms bharatnatyam also but uh, kathak was something that was most pop that is most popular in north bharatnatyam is popular in south so uh, i was born and brought up in north as i mentioned so uh, this is something i came uh, like i just learn and uh, you can say uh, that path phase learning phase of learning kathak and mastering it was something that two hours of getting those session of kathak a relaxing session for me and you can say the best part i had right now whenever i get a chance i try to play some music and get my same old vibe to live in that moment you can say yeah so it, you feel really good when you dance yeah do you want to sh show us could you show us a couple of of what movements that would look like so you're not shy you love to <laughs> so would love to i'll show you some couple of hand movements okay and in kathak uh, and then you it's like you have to this is one hand movement in it and it's just you have to be like this shall i try to do it yeah sure you just have to put it like <laughs> huh, yeah and then just roll it down you have to just put one horizontally and then bring one vertically something like that so it is term as ta the the tat a the the tat so this is one of the first step that we learn and there are many others but would love to show it some another time <laughs> yeah we'll have to have a special show of just of that yeah, sure, sure. i won't participate i'll just watch sure and then so, i will make you learn also oh gosh um <laughs> that would explode your whole day so those movements that you just made your hand movements is there a translation for what that means yeah so when uh in the background the tabla and the harmonium played and that is also in the in that particular you have to play with ta the the and on that you have to recognize that music and just do the steps mhm mm okay so it is all based on timing just like all music yeah exactly yeah do you play instruments other than dance do you actually play instruments no no i don't but yeah initially i thought but uh, you know like when you heard when you heard the sound of those instrument my legs start dancing so uh -huh. i don't have that thing of uh, and even uh, my mother wanted me to sing and learn singing but i don't think uh, i have that voice to be a good singer oh so, you have tried though <laughs> yeah like the yeah. voice that you have a very soothing voice but in my case my voice is something a lot work need to be done to become a singer so i just use my legs to be the best dancer you know it's interesting they they say scientists have always said that music when it makes your body move it's because of the connection that your brain has to the sound and that's that explains why some people like to move when they hear music yeah and even some people also like to dance when they taste the best food like for me oh, when right. i am having a very like bad mood or when i am tired or sad about something i order my best food or home, uh, homely food and when i have it the sense of calmness and the you say the worries goes away you are totally lost in the taste of that food so whether it's music or food it depends on the person what make their body moves that's true you can see that when you see people biting into something that they love they just start doing that kind of like their body starts moving and it's it's an unconscious kind of movement right yeah that's me actually when i'm tasting my favorite food or uh -huh. just dancing on my favorite song wow 
So Ayushi, let's say, you know, I come and visit and we're going to go over to your place. You're going to make dinner. What would be the awesome dinner you would cook for a foreigner like myself? Okay. So the first thing that I will serve you uh, is uh, the paneer. Uh, paneer is a cotton cheese and uh, more, many people have told me that I make a very good butter paneer. So butter paneer is something uh, uh, gravy uh, with spices and paneer and butter in it. And then bread. Bread is chapati. Chapati, Indian bread with a lot of ghee in it. And at the end, some son papri that I know you like the most with kheer. Oh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. Um, what do you think about other cuisines, are there any other cuisines from other countries that you really enjoy, Italian or Chinese or Japanese or anything like that? Yeah, so in Bangalore, I actually tried most of the cuisine. And Japanese, the sushi, I like the most. It's totally not that much spicy or something, but the taste that it has is something that I really liked about. And the Italian food which is something the pizzas uh here like when we are doing late night shift or when we are working late night a pizza is something that we have to order at three or four o'clock in the morning and have one slice of it in a hand and doing brainstorm session with our teammates so that is a go to uh, go to food for our team delivery food a very big thing in India like it is in the United States where people just, you know, you get on your app or you make a phone call and you order it and it comes getting delivered to you? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is right now. Most of the many unicorns like Zomato, Swiggy, these all are the delivering uh, companies and they deliver food within like, say, you can say uh, in an uh, in 20 to 30 minutes to your doorstep. So mm -hmm. you're just working and you have you just have a feeling of eating pizza just open your phone get the best your flavor you want and it will be delivered on your doorstep so when an indian eats pizza what are you adding to it or what is added to it in india to make it hit your spice receptors the way you'd like so in india most of the pizza uh you can say the company or the who make pizza they know indian taste buds and they already add that much spice to the Indian pizza, but they also have this uh, spreadings of uh, organo or let's say chili flakes that you add on top of it. So actually, I like I prefer to have two to three packet of chili flakes on my pizza to make it more spicy. Right, right, Ayushi. Since COVID happened, for myself, I'll speak only for myself. It appears as though social connections have spread out and disconnected and that I don't have the social circle I once had and I don't feel like I have connections with people as strong and deep as I once did. And I blame that on COVID and social media, but I'm a lot older than you are. And I was wondering if that's something that you've noticed in India, whether for the country or whether it's different for you because you're young and you're working in a startup and that you're involved in social stuff. Has there been any post-COVID kind of relationship breakdown as far as connection to people? So when I tell my experience, I was at my home during COVID and it was a lockdown. We can't go out. We can't order anything from outside. But we were separate from each other. But uh, I see this, like my mother is cooking different recipe and sharing it with her sister. And they are on a video call and they are talking about today they made this. Okay, I'll share this recipe with you. So that was something which I haven't seen pre-COVID. They used to talk for like five to ten minutes and that's it. But in during COVID, they were having half an hour session on how to make this particular dish. 
and there was a competition who will make everyday new dishes for their family and they post those picture on the social media uh-huh. so by this way there was a closeness in the family but also you were losing contact with outside people but post covid that thing happened that people started connecting with different whether it's their friend or whether it's their relative but that distance was there because i have seen many people have lost their close members in covid and that particular thing still have even in my family we lost some of our close uh, family members my father passed away in covid oh, so wow. that was that was something which we also take a lot of time to cope up with but a yeah. uh, family stick together is always and we did that and we are still we have that void but we have to live the way and and live uh, it's like right now my mother is some someone who i love the most and whatever i am doing that is for her mm-hmm. so i just want to make her proud and uh, that's what my whole life aim is to make her proud to give her the best thing and to make her live the best out of her life there seems to be a huge emphasis on education and learning in india more than i've seen in a lot of other countries is that something that also you brought up with yeah the competition part basically that this person daughter is much more good you have to uh, also may you have to also study hard to get great marks and uh, that is something that will make a good career for you and then you will become independent so that is something that uh, made us mentally and mentally prepared that we have to give our best some point it's a good thing that from younger uh, younger age only you are ready to face the different difficulties but in some way you are also losing that uh, excitement or that joy that i say in western country the kids have they spend a lot of time with their friends and uh, they get the opportunity to travel different different places and see the world but in our in our india you have to first get settled to take those decisions like you have to first stand on your own feet just get the best job get the best college then your parents will allow but at the end that that what which make us also strong so yeah you know things just keep popping into my mind so forgive me for all these questions but that yeah that's okay. what makes for a good interview show yeah <laughs> in america you know when we're when we're learning and we're looking at india and we've heard things like dowry and being married off and relationships and choices and things like that how does that affect the current generation let's say someone in your age range or generation is that something that is affecting you or are you free at will to date whoever you want and do whatever you want related to relationships uh that restrict uh, you can say that particular resistance is still there in our country but uh there is also one thing when you are not dependent when you are earning your own money when you have that freedom to live your life that that time the parents give that much freedom to the kids to choose their life partner but there are certain ca- condition terms and condition they should be of same caste they should be of same religion so these are the term condition they are like choose uh, from the same caste and any religion and choose anyone you want okay so put in these terms and condition but it's still like people are dev- the mindset has developing but major part of people still follow this particular tradition mm-hmm. and then it's come about dowry part that is also something it's still there in india i'm totally against dowry 
but my parents want to give dowry that is something they want to give to me like a gift or let's say a particular thing to their daughter but some of the parents they have to give a dowry which is still there in our society and something which is decreasing but still prevails here okay so it is still prevalent and so a dowry then for for those who don't know would be a collection of goods and products and wealthy items that the bride's family would give to the groom's family it's sort of a male is someone who is superior in our indian society that is the term and when you are giving a your girl to a male so it is something like that male that person that boy is accepting your girl so as a gift you are giving these particular privileges whether it's in term of money whether it's in term of different goods like home appliances or furniture or a car a motorbike you are giving him that's as a gift that thank you for having my daughter and spending time with her or spend all spending a life with her together and do, making a family do men ever let's just say more mm-hmm. independent thinking men or more modern men ever say i don't i don't want your goods i just want your daughter i want to live my life with your daughter i don't need to get anything special besides her true and there are many men uh, like in india there are many men they only need a right partner who are there in their good or bad times and just support each other Mm-hmm. there are those people but still a particular part of society has that kind of men also who don't who want women as you can say someone who take care of their daily chores take care of their kids and <clears throat> they think men are dependent on women women are dependent on men but here it's like women are totally dependent on men and men are someone who have to take decision for their wife or a woman right right so is that something that you're in your mind changing or moving away from will or will you stick with that age old tradition for me it's you are having a companion with whom you have to share your life ahead and get the best part of it be with him uh in the bad part or we be with him in the good time it's like sharing the best or the worst moment together and uh, making our life like achieving all the goals all the dreams and making our parents proud so that would be the best case scenario for a marriage for a long term happily ever after kind of scenario what about prior to that our you allowed to have boyfriends was that something that you do um do people have you know premarital relationships even if they don't plan on becoming married how does that work relationships those particular uh, let's say when you're talking about boyfriend yeah it's common in india but mm-hmm. they have to hide it uh, from their parents some parents are really open about it that part is also improving and when it's uh, when it's about premarital affair and everything that is also when it comes about western country it's still the same thing prevails here but uh, in india you have seen the divorce rate is percentage is very less that's because we have this tradition that once you tie knot with one person you have to be with her always uh, like like for having with uh, sharing all the good thing bad thing with her with mm-hmm. her with him so that particular mindset it some is somehow i praise about or i let's say i am proud of that our culture have that mindset as compared to western country like in western country uh, this is very common but for us we uh, are stick we are stick to our these particular old thoughts and this is something which i always st- stick to it uh, that 
you have to be one man or uh, you have to be with a particular man and live a uh, rest of life with him mhm mm yeah i think that somewhere in the middle probably would be the best response for everybody right something in between you know 50% divorce rate in the united states versus you know for always in your country maybe the gray area and that's what this show is all about right the yeah. 80 85% of life is the gray area the black and the white are only small like 10% right mhm mm correct so try to st stay away from extremes if at all possible and when it comes about india uh, negative parts goes much more viral because of our population you can say our country has that tendency or power to make anything goes viral in a second exactly and that's what people are attracted to is the negative aspects of life and that's why things do go viral because they find out like you know it's like a train wreck or a car wreck or something that people their attention is automatically drawn to that instead of like what's nice about this or what's really good about her you know that correct i guess this particular podcast will also go viral <laughs> oh, i hope so and with your help and <laughs> magic roll how could it not <laughs> yeah So is there anything that you wanted to wrap up with that I haven't asked you that I should have? So you actually you have covered all part of what I am right now, different aspects of my life. But yeah, thank you for having me Matthew here and uh, yeah, that's all. Ayushi next time it'll be all dance party with Ayushi. Sure. Would love to do that. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much for joining me today on 50 Tastes of Grey. I think this is going to be really valuable for people to learn from someone who's living in India and all the questions that you were able to respond to. I think it'll be re very refreshing and eye-opening. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for having me here. Take care. We'll talk soon. Sure. Thank you, Matthew. Have a great Thank day. You. you too.